leave these on the seat here in case anybody else comes. Before we start, can we pray and offer God some praise and help the teacher get his mind right? Because it's been it's been a little a little disconcerting. I'm a little jangled. Uh, so far and it's gone wrong. So that must mean that the devil has anticipated that God is going to bless us this evening. <laughs> so, Amen. Because he's a turkey. <laughs> the devil is a turkey. And he is a lie. So, you know what? I'm going to use my raggedy Bible. There you go. Everybody needs a raggedy Bible. Need a Bible that you can just write in, mark up, <laughs> just do what you got to do. Before we start, uh, teach a song real quick, real quick, and I'm going to need your help, but it's so simple that you're going to get it, okay? Everybody repeat after me. You are a holy God. You, you are, are a holy, holy God. God. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Holy God, holy God, yes you are. Holy, holy God, God, holy God, God yes, yes you are. are. Holy God. Holy, holy God. God. You are an awesome 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 God. Awesome God, awesome God, yes you are. Awesome God, awesome God, yes you are awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Mighty God, you are sorry, you are a mighty God again. You are a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, yes you are. Mighty God, mighty God, yes you are. Mighty God. Mighty God. You got it? Mm -hmm. That's the song. That's the song. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Yes, you are a holy God. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Yes, you are awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Yes, you are mighty God. Okay? Now, forgive me. I'm going to have pitch problems because it's sung in a higher key than my natural <coughs> voice. But it goes like this. Help the Lord. All right. It goes like this. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Holy God, holy God. Yes, you are holy God. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, yes you are, awesome God, you are a mighty God, you are a mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, yes you are, mighty God, easy enough? We're not going to change words, right? We're just going to start with holy. We're going to sing that till we get the hang of it, all right? You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Holy God, holy God. Yes, you are holy God. We'll sing again. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Awesome God. Awesome God. You are an 
God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, yes you are mighty God. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this evening. The devil will not get any glory this evening because all glory belongs to you. So we praise you for this opportunity to sit at your feet while you instruct us in your word. We pray, Lord, for these that are here, those that are coming, and those that will ultimately see this tape. We pray, Lord, that your truth would be what is made manifest, not just in our hearts, but in our lives. So bless our time together, we pray. Amen. 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 I want to welcome you again to this course. It is Jesus, the Miracle Worker. This is class number three. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to look at Jesus walking on water tonight and among the technical difficulties that we have this evening is I do not have my wireless clicker so can I get a volunteer to just advance the slide for me you're gonna have to use my laptop thank you so if you just go to the next slide it's uh, just the entry key right yeah all right course objectives again uh, at the conclusion of this course we want you to be able to discuss the various instances of miracles in scripture you don't have to know them all obviously because cover to cover the Bible is a miracle discuss we want you to be able to discuss Jesus's miracles in their context and yes you know we get into the different context number uh, three goal number three objective number three discuss Jesus's general theology and its application what we're saying when we say that is we want you to be able to understand the truth that Jesus is communicating about himself and about God and how that truth plays itself in our lives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. All right, so the course outline tonight is it is walking on water. We've already done Jesus stilling the storm, and last week we talked about the Gadarene demoniac. Tonight we're going to do another nature miracle. Uh, which is walking on water. Next slide, please. Uh, and that just, next slide. That just shows you the rest of it. Again, our foundational principle for this study is from Timothy, the book of Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Again, the basic principle is if you accept what Scripture says about itself, which is that it is the very Word of God, then anything you see in Scripture is possible. Amen? And Amen. is true. No matter how staggering it may seem, something like a man walking on water would to the casual observer seem ridiculous. But if you believe in the God of the Bible, then believe the Bible. Amen? All right, so we define a miracle as this, among other things, an unexpected event which is attributed to divine intervention. We pointed out that sometimes the event itself is attributed to a miracle worker, right? A saint or a religious leader. And a miracle is sometimes thought of as a perceptible interruption or suspension of the laws of nature. It is not, ooh, what a miracle, I found $2 on the street. <laughs> you know, what a miracle, I was down to, according to my, the, my, the gauge on my car, I was down to four miles and I made it six to the gas station. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus, but probably not a miracle. Amen? Next slide. Course number three, Jesus walks on the water. Next slide. Next slide, please. All right, our focal verses tonight. Now, let me say up front, let me say up front that this miracle is one of only two. It's, I'm sorry. This miracle, let me say it this way. This miracle is, is presented by three of the gospel writers. Only Luke doesn't touch it. But what we're going to find is that this miracle is connected to the only miracle that is presented in all four gospels other than the resurrection itself. The resurrection presents... I'm sorry, the Gospels present the resurrection in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, obviously, but also Jesus feeding the 5,000 is the only other miracle that's in all four Gospels. You with me? Mm -hmm. So our focal verses tonight, we're taking them from Mark, all right? Mark chapter 6, verses 47 and 48. Can we read it together? 
Now when now evening, evening had come, come the, boat the boat was out, out in the middle of the, of the lake, lake, and, and he, he was by himself on, on the land. land. And having and seen, seen that they were troubled and tormented in their rowing, for the wind was against, against them about, about the fourth watch, watch of the night, night between three o'clock and six o'clock a.m., he, he came to them, walking directly on the sea, and he acted as if he meant to pass by them. Mark chapter 6, chapter six verses uh, 17 and 18. I'll just read it quickly. And they took a boat and were going across the sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and still Jesus had not yet come back to them. Meanwhile, the sea was getting rough and rising high because of a great violent wind that was blowing. Next and our memory verses. Anybody do their memory verse from last week? All right, we'll test you after, after class. Tonight's memory verses, Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29, same episode, different account. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and he came toward Jesus. All right, so again, here are our questions. And I gave you a printout tonight that has these questions as well as some more. These are... These are questions, I mean, everybody knows the W's and the H questions, right? All I did was took those, and in my Bible study, I didn't learn this anywhere, it's just something I picked up on, and I believe that we're called to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and what? All of our mind, right? So, I, I, have, I have learned, you know, over, over some time, I have learned that in my Bible study, in my personal study, it's beneficial for me to ask a bunch of questions. And the habit that I try to get into is ask one more question. So even as I'm reading, as I'm studying, I'm asking the Lord more questions. I told you the first night about my cousin Joy, uh, who when we were little, she had two annoying habits. One, she would never do anything you ask her to do. Joy, will you do this? I ain't. Suck it up. I ain't. I ain't. The other annoying habit was she would always want to know why, but why, but why, but why. And it got annoying because eventually what? You're either going to get tired or you're going to run out of answers. Well, God doesn't get tired and he doesn't run out of answers. So when I study, I just continually ask questions until I feel like the Lord is helping me get it. Does that make sense? And I feel like if the Lord can explain it to me in a way that I can get it, then I can explain it to you in a way that you can get it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Here's how I get there. I ask questions. Who wrote or reported the event? Sometimes you can gain insight into a particular passage when you know who wrote it. So if Paul is talking to you about forgiveness, and Paul says, for example, uh, he tells Timothy, for example, that that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all, worthy, I'm sorry, of all ex acceptation is that the crowd